Hi guys, Scotty here. <coughs> I'm going to um, start putting this engine back together. So uh, I've basically got to a stage where it's all nice and clean. All the burrs, any burrs that were left over from before um, we had it, uh, have gone. I've had some uh, some of my parts turn up in the post today, so I've got some new old stock plus 30 thou piston rings. Um, I've already had some new old stock um, glacier bearings. Um, don't trust, if, especially if it's new old stock, don't trust what it says in the box. box. Check the, um, the item itself. And we've got um, the right part number, matches, and it's standard bearings, which is what I need. Um, Heather, it's clean, ready to go back on. I make a habit of um, throwing away from the bench when I've once I've got everything clean. I throw everything away that was on the bench. It was dirty, like uh, rag wise. I mean, I've got my book ready, and my torque settings. I've got uh, my torque wrench, paperwork out, so I can make sure I've got the right torque settings. Because everything nowadays is in bloody uh, newton meters or kilogram feet meters and whatever's kilogram per meter. Um, so I'm ready to go really, um, I've got uh, nice clean oil in my oil can, so yeah ready to go. Well, I said every face is uh, clean and ready to go, uh, one important one on the back of these Austins, the, uh, as I said before, the back hasn't, uh, the rear main hasn't got an oil seal. It's done with a scroll, and um, there needs to be a little bit of uh, um, jointing compound on the back. Um, for that, my personal preference is a red Hylomar. Um Caterpillar make a, a very similar. It's red. It's um, semi-hardening and it's not silicon. So, nice clean, clean gloves. I don't want to start introducing any dirt now, so where I do it, I never, never do anything to the back. Never oil it, never grease it. You've got um, the little um, swage mark in there. That um, I start that, introduce that into the into the journal first, and then just push down, and we're set. Obviously, just run along till you've got them all in. Um, very quickly show you something, but uh, some of the um, not fabulous machining that goes on with some of these engines. Um, obviously, this, the crankshaft gets its oil from uh, from um, the oil oilways in the uh, block, and as you can see, there's a slight offset to that one. That one's spot on, and a slight offset to that one. It is. If it was a race engine or a super high performance engine then I'd be doing something about it. I'd be getting my little Dremel out and, and nicking it across but it's, uh, it's fine for what I'm doing on this. It's not a high performance engine, it's, um, it's just a fairly standard engine with a little bit of better breathing at the top end. So, oil can needs to be uh, 100% guaranteed nice clean oil. Do not want any swarf in it? You don't want any crap in it. Lovely clean oil. Doesn't matter what grade it is for this purpose, it's only to, to help when you first start it up. So it just needs to be clean. It's not going to hang around in there long, it's just uh, you just don't want to be putting uh, the cranking on dry bearings. All 
Right. I'm just going to feed my thrust butt washers in now. Do it this way because I have a habit of dropping them in there. I don't like putting oil on the back of them to make them stay in there, but I want to, again, I want the backs to be perfectly dry. It's just how I like to do it. Just drop it in, feed them round. When I put the other caps on in a minute, that'll oil them nicely anyway. So, okay, so I'm going to start at the back. Um, this is one I want my sealer on. Don't need uh, hardly any sealer, just a tiny little touch. Don't want seeing lots of sealer joint paste going everywhere, so just a tiny little smear of it. It's a really good machine finish anyway, so it just needs a little help. Clean off before you put your new, shim, your sh new uh, shell in. Again, introduce it into the groove. Push it in. Nice clean oil. Some people like to put um, a 90 weight gear oil in there to mix in with their engine oil because it holds in there better. It's a bit of a preference, I think. Drop my tab washers and my bolts in. Bolts have been cleaned. These are not stretch bolts there. They're, they're just standard bolts, so they don't have to. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to replace them if you don't. If you think they're fine. My personal opinion, again, it's up to you. They're not that expensive, but it's all about uh, what budget you have at the end of the day. Make sure the faces of the journals and the, the caps and the block are clean. Any dirt is going to hold the uh, cap off away from the face. So if there is any, just make sure it's clean. Now this um, this centre one, you need to put the excuse me, you need to put the. Um, Thrush washers in now because they'll you can't get them, they've got a lock tab on them. So you need to go in now. Make sure we have them the right way around. So the wearing material faces uh, the crankshaft and the steel back face faces the cap itself. And make sure you have the cap around the right way. gasket face on the um, front cover, uh, front plate, um, it comes on the front of this face so you make sure you get the gasket, the old residue gasket off of this before and it's clean before you uh, assemble it otherwise you've got to make a mess when you 
get it off later on. don't need or shouldn't need to use uh, any brute force getting those caps on sometimes a little bit of a, a gentle tap with a with um, a very soft hammer but very, but not very often depends how tight the dowels are I guess Make sure your tools are clean before you go back on, put everything back on. I don't want to um, put any particular force on these now for a minute. So every step, whenever you can, just make sure you've still got a free turning crankshaft. So I literally just very lightly pinched up at the moment. Just go to the next stage. Tools are clean. A bit more force, just literally pinching up. Ah, something I should have told you just now before I got too far. Obviously, you know I've cleaned this engine and. Uh, if you saw the video before you saw me blowing out all the holes um, if you don't um, do that um, there is a chance you get a little bit of residue in the bottom of the um, bottom of the um, thread hole and you'll get it um, creating a hydraulic hydraulic force in the bottom and you could you could crack the uh, crack the block so make sure that the the female part of the thread is perfectly clean and free from any uh, oil. Um, right, the the uh, torque wrench setting in the book is uh, is for factory torques and the factory torques for Austin engines of the, of the day was with dry hardware, in other words dry uh, threads, no grease, no lubricant um, and it gives us a torque wrench setting of uh, 60 pounds. Well, if my my threads have got a very very light film of um, WD-40 on them where I've, where I've uh, sprayed them and uh, you need to add add another five pounds of torque um, because they're basically easier to go in you need to add some torque to it so, and five pound is, is the is a recognized um, figure for for lubricated threads Okay, um, typical torque wrench of modern day. Um, this one's got uh, kilogram meters on the back and newton meters on the front. Of course, all my settings are in uh, um, uh, pound foot, and so you have to do the conversion. So you keep hold of the bit of paper if, uh, when it comes in the uh, in the packaging, um, so you can do your conversion. 
so my conversion is if I've got um, um, 60 pounds that comes out at roughly 81 82 newton meters I've added my 5 to it which takes me up to 90 newton meters actually it comes out at 66 pound feet but uh, 90 newton meters is a nice round number so that's what I've got my, my toilet set in um, a lot of them are the same uh, don't forget to lock it off because when you're turning it you unscrew it and release the torque I like to start from the middle and work my way outwards another test for my little uh, engine stand once you've done one check it again make sure it's not gone look tight it's a bit hard to do uh, working way outwards on a three bearing three main bearing crank but you get the point Still turn it. Still turn it. I've elected to stay with the old thrust washers. I decided that. Uh, one thou is not too much to worry about, so I've stayed with them. And now I'm uh, able to put some oil around the thrust. Just load it up now. Okay, so the nice free turning crankshaft, ready to accept all the rest. Just check everywhere to make sure I can't stand to see big splurges of um, of uh, oh, jointing compound or sealer. So I always like to check, and if I've got any now whilst it's wet, I'll get it off whilst it's wet. Next video, I'll be back putting. Uh, I'll be putting the um, pistons and. Uh, uh, piston rings on the pistons and um, throwing them back in the block. All right, so catch up with you later. Just a quick note at the end of this. Um, don't forget to uh, wind your torque wrench off. Must always go back in your toolbox wound off. It uh, ruins the calibration on the torque wrench if you don't do that um, and the last thing sorry um, in regards to the top tab washers we are whinging so much about the tab washers uh, I, I like to if I can um, basically use uh, something like gooseneck pliers to to um, fold the tabs around and um, rather than hammering them round or anything like that or screwdriving them because it just um, you can put more pressure further down and round and it sort of locks better so that's how I like to do it other people will have, uh, have their own way I'm sure um, it's just how I like to do it Got the, got the pliers set right. You can just fold them up round and they look all nice and polite when they're done. No horrible graunch marks on them or nastiness.
better ply so these ones are broken.